Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 20. This is where Paul and Barnabas fled Iconium because of people wanting to kill them. And they went to Lystra, which is south of Iconium. And then they went west to Derby. Now, if you didn't watch it yet, make sure you watch the video where I go through the map of Paul and Barnabas's journey. It's very important to put a visual on this, okay? Because otherwise, it, it doesn't mean a whole lot to you. You should know exactly where Paphos is, where Antioch is, where Lystra is, Iconium is, and Derby is. That way it gives you a better idea of what's going on. It really puts you right into the scriptures here. So if you haven't seen it yet, pause this and make sure you go and watch the video about Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey. That way it gives you a whole lot better idea what's going on here. It gives you a visual. You know more about what's going on. So just a quick recap. In the previous session, we read about how Paul and Barnabas was in Iconium and some of the people sought to kill them and they took off. They're like, we're getting out of here. So they went south to Lystra and this is where it picks up. This is verse eight. At Lystra, a certain man sat impotent in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. He was listening to Paul speaking, who, fastening eyes on him and seeing that he had faith to be made whole, said with a loud voice, stand up right on your feet. He leaped up and walked. When the multitude saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying in the language of Lysonia, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Now the word gods here is most likely from the Hebrew word Elohim, which in most of the Bible is translated simply as God, okay? God in most of the so-called Old Testament is translated from the Hebrew word Elohim, which really literally is gods, okay? So what these people were saying is, hey, God has come down to us in the likeness of men. So they thought that Paul and Barnabas was like the incarnation of God, okay? They pretty much almost put them on the level of Jesus. They called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercury because he was the chief speaker. Now you gotta wonder why they called Barnabas Jupiter. Jupiter is like the largest planet. I wonder if Barnabas was just a little bit larger than Paul. I mean, I said it before that Paul means small, okay? Could have been because his stature was small. Could have been like he was a shorter man. He was a smaller man. It could also be because Saul named himself Paul just to keep himself humble, like spiritually small. But why was Barnabas called Jupiter? You got to wonder about this. And why did they call Paul Mercury? I mean, Mercury is the hottest planet. Maybe Paul was like the most fiery one of both of them. So Paul was the one that was like the on fire preacher here. He was like the one that always spoke up. He was very outspoken, almost like Peter in a sense that he was the one to speak up first. Okay. He was like pretty fiery. Verse 13, the priest of Jupiter, whose temple was in front of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and would have made a sacrifice along with the multitudes. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their clothes. Now, in biblical times, when, when someone would tear their clothes, that was a sign of just grief. That was a sign of just, just protest, okay? They tore their clothes and sprang into the multitude, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like passions with you. In other words, we also are men who are subject to passions like sinful passions just like you are and, and bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to the living God who made the sky and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who in the generations gone by allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he didn't leave himself without witness in that he did good and gave you rains from the sky and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. You see here, Paul and Barnabas makes it very clear that God shows good to you in giving you rain and crops in their due season. So that also implies that when there is a drought or when crops are not produced in due season, that's a sign that God is not showing you favor very much here. Verse 18, even saying these things, they hardly stop the multitudes from making a sacrifice to them. But some Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, 
Uh-oh, they come from Iconium. Remember back in Iconium, they wanted to kill them, so they kind of followed them. And having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul. So they finally did what they wanted to do. They finally stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But as the disciples stood around him, he rose up and entered into the city. Could this have been a resurrection? It is possible. If not, Paul was nearly dead, okay? He barely escaped death here. He was in bad shape. On the next day, he went out with Barnabas to Derby. So yes, they went to Derby and they continued preaching. I mean, Paul could have gave a lot. How many Christians today, if they, if they suffered that, they would say, okay, I've had enough, okay? But Paul didn't. Even though he narrowly escaped death, he continued preaching. I mean, this is exciting. Reading about the first journeys of Paul and Barnabas and how they dealt with things, what exactly happened here. I mean, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, how they, bear, how they narrowly escaped death time and time again. This is exciting. This is history. And let it be more than just history to you. Let it be an encouragement to you. I mean, let's seek the truth. Let's seek the truth with all of our heart, even if it hurts. I mean, seek God with all of your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call on him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.